Hello YouTube, and the big news is out, Ubuntu 84 will be using the GNOME as its main desktop environment. It's a bit of old news, but I decided to make a video about it right now. I guess the hype is over, but still, now, I, now it's the time when I have time to make this video, so yeah, it's definitely great to see that happening. Canonical will be dumping Unity 7 and 8 completely, from what I'm aware of. They will still support Unity 8, uh, not 8, 7, but Mirror is completely gone, we can forget about it. Wayland is the thing, it's the future. And now we have two main Linux companies working on it, Canonical and Red Hat, so this should improve progress greatly, and I hope to see more Wayland development coming off right now when, when Canonical jumps into that that development tree. So anyway, let's start off with the video, which will be, I'll be taking a look at the Ubuntu 704 GNOME versions, so we can have a look at what Ubuntu will become in the future and what state it is right now with GNOME development on it. So I hope you enjoy the video, uh, let's start with installation process of it. The installation is a standard Ubuntu installation. There isn't much download updates, third party software, standard partitioning. No much, no much change here since I remember it's always been like that. Nothing special. I actually kind of hope with the switch to GNOME now they will maybe change the installer to something different. Even though I have to say it works, but it's always nice to see a change. So I'll start a username, password. You can pick your stuff as usual. No much here, encryption. And I have to say, installation is pretty nice. We get some, what you call it, some presentation about it. It's definitely, the, I hope it improves anyway. It's it's okay as it is. I just really hope to see something new. It's always nice to see something fresh. And looking for like they release a new thing every time. There's every, every year we're getting a new update of Ubuntu. And the installation stays the same. It's just nice if they include something maybe special like what apps you want to have when you boot up your system. Like here it shows you you can use Firefox and Chrome, which like it comes with Firefox anyway. Where's the Chrome? Well, Chromium to be specific. They could give you the option do you prefer Firefox or do you want Chromium? It would be just nice. Or just, just let the user pick. And as usual, keep it simple by just saying keep the defaults or if you want to customize it. That will be everything I wish for from this. So let's just jump into the desktop environment immediately. So here we have the GNOME desktop. Uh, there isn't much customization here done immediately. So it's a pure GNOME desktop we get. So let's go into the applications. As you can see there is Firefox, Rhythmbox, Photos, Files, Software and Help. Uh, let's see more. Fragment, let's go all. So you have books, calculator, standard stuff, Firefox, yeah, as I said, LibreOffice pre-installed, that's nice. Uh, what else? Software data, software, so, some other software stuff, what is this exactly? Can't remember. How to use Ubuntu for, oh, that's your data. Can I just stop that for now? And let's go back to it. Uh, startup applications, startup disk, uh, terminal, transmission, utilities. Uh, disk usage, disk, system, yeah. Archive manager, tweak tools, which is very nice to be included. Most people use GNOME install tweak tools anyway. I don't get it. Why oh, pure GNOME doesn't come with it. Anyway, so yeah, external view, yeah, videos. Okay, so pretty much standard uh, GNOME packages with some extra stuff that you wouldn't usually ship with. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the uh, software center. So here we have it. Mm, it looks way much nicer than what uh, Ubuntu had before ages ago. The old Ubuntu Center. It also works way much better. So let's go, for example, productivity. Let's pick something small. Mm, let's say, for example, maybe not productivity, but maybe let's go into audio video, maybe. Something small. Mm, let's pick Clementine. Why not? So let's go into scrolling. So what we have here is screenshots of the application. Not every application has screenshots still, so just be aware of it. It's nicely presented. I don't know why the other one doesn't load up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's gone now. 
All right. So a quick summary of it, a website, and we get reviews from other people. Uh, let's see, do we need to register? No, you could just immediately type in your review. Very nice. No registration required. Virtual for so this is installing. Let's go back. It should be installing the background. It is, uh, so let's just have a quick look you know, What can we remove? It gives you a lot of options to remove stuff. It does allow you to remove a lot of things, a lot of things. So that's pretty good. You can clean up your system from what stuff you don't need. And there might be a bit of sauce on it. Like the games that come with it, they, they're not really necessary for most people. You might leave one or two, but yeah, that's basically it. And some of the GNOME maps that you might just not use. Um, yeah, updates. So it includes your always updates. I don't get it. Why do we still have to soft update or then? I guess they just have to remove it over time. Either do that or modify the GNOME Center, App Center, I should say. Which, yeah. So this is actually a fresh installation of uh, Ubuntu GNOME 17.04 without any updates. It's what, what I get immediately after installation of the ISO I got from their website. Okay, so we get a nice notification here. It's installed. Lovely. Uh, it still says, yeah, it says install. Okay, oh, there we go. And we can just launch it through that. Yeah, it works. So that was very nice installation, I have to say. You could just leave it in the background, nothing happens. Compared to what you call the old Ubuntu software center that work only 50% of the time. For me, anyway. And yeah, let's have a look. So yeah, that's the updates. And what else do we have here? Uh, Firefox is probably just a standard Firefox installation if I'm aware of it. This, by the way, this is all running through Wayland as well. I should mention that from the start. So that's the seamless performance of it. Uh, location use wire connection, there'll be also Wi Fi. It, uh, for sound, there'll be a microphone if you use that. You can go into settings from here as well. And let's see, background notifications, online accounts is for you. Yeah, Google, Nextcloud, Facebook, you can just integrate all of them into it. Never actually use that, so I can't tell much about it. Search, uh, the search bar we get here, we can customize it, so search it through files. I usually disable the files because if you if you have a SSD, it's fine, but if you have a normal hardware, it might just slow things a bit. So, Bluetooth color for color calibration, which I usually like, and you know, that's a nice thing that not not any other DE desktop environment I know includes. So, you can just get a calibration profile for your monitor. Displays, it handles very nicely the, what you call it, multiple displays. GNOME is pretty good at it. And we get a night light, so we can just turn it on set at a specific time. Because this is something people usually could also install anyway. So it's nice they include it. Keyboard, mouse, power, if, if you use uh, what you call it, laptops. I don't have much options here, but you will have a bit of customization if you use a laptop. Printer, sound, vacuum, tablet. I never actually use that one. Uh, backups. So yeah, it just keeps a backup of your fol folder of your choice. Uh, date, time, details. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, you go to 1704. The whole application can be set here, which is also nice in that they give you an option for that. And whatever you want to do if you get DVD, music player, photos, standard GNOME stuff. Uh, let's see uh, what's called memory usage. How it's getting on after a bit of work on it. 1.6 gigabytes, it's, bit of, it's a good bit of usage. You can definitely get less out of it if you clean up stuff and probably if I did a fresh boot of a bit, it might get a bit less. Yeah, the GNOME software center takes up immediately 286 and it's close, so I'm not sure what's going on there. It should be, should not be there anymore, but it is. So yeah, subtract that, we'll be getting around 1.4, 1.3 gigabytes of usage, which is not bad. You can definitely get out more out of it by just cleaning up a few stuff like Clement is still running, so yeah. Uh, we have XY Lunge. So yeah, that's that anyway. EXT4 as a standard file manager as usual. So I guess it's kind of what Ubuntu will become in Ubuntu 18 or 4 over time. I expect them to customize a bit more rather than keeping a clean Ubuntu, I mean Ubuntu GNOME look because this is without any uh, teams or anything like that. If you go to Tweet Tools, for example, 
yeah, it's standard via GTK Plus icons, course, so everything is standard GNOME stuff. The extensions are, yeah, same thing. The ones that come pre installed with GNOME. Um, the fonts, yeah, everything is standard GNOME looks of it. So basically, I hope they customize a bit. Uh, I hope, the, one thing I hope they won't turn the GNOME into what you call it, orange GNOME, like they did with Unity, everything is orange, that would be just pure awful. But I hope they do customize it to give it a slightly more unique looks. And yeah, I have to say it performs pretty well. Uh, so yeah, oh, there we have. I didn't close the comment, hi, that explains, but the software was closed. Anyway, so I guess, it's, I have to say, it's not bad. If that's what you Canonical wants to go with, I fully agree with them. They could, it would be more interesting actually if they went with something else, but I guess Unity is based on GNOME, it's a fork of GNOME, so they're more used to working with it. Uh, I would say it would be nicer if they either use Mate or XFC as their standard uh, interface for the Ubuntu 18.4, that would just be better for older hardware, as a lot of people just use Ubuntu thinking, oh yeah, I should pick Ubuntu because it's Linux, so it uses up less resources and everything like that, so they put it on older machine. And in case of Unity and GNOME, that's not the case. You would rather want to go with something else. And just, I know a lot of people think that. I remember uh, a friend that I had told me, like, that he heard about Ubuntu and he's like, could you install it for me? And I said, what do you have? A Pentium? And he said, Pentium 4. And then I was like, well, you better off running Ubuntu because Ubuntu in that case. And he's okay. And I just showed him what Ubuntu would be like. It was really awful, laggy and everything. Where Ubuntu worked perfectly fine. So I guess they, it would be just also interesting to see what could they do with XFC or LXD if they could go with that. Which if they want to go GNOME, dump Unity completely, go Wayland, it's great. We get better Wayland support because Red Hat is supporting it. And now Canonical is supporting it. The big Linux companies are fully supporting it as well as GNOME. So we should see some great things from that coming. So I will wrap up on that. I have to, as I said, great distribution. I hope to see it more developed. I would kind of hope for them removing some of the proprietary stuff as usual, like uh, they, they could go with a liberal version if you want to, if such a thing exists, it would be nice if they su officially support it, but uh, then again, a lot of Linux distributors do do that, but that's just my hopes for the future. So thanks for watching guys, if you liked this video, remember to like it and share, and if you dislike this video, just dislike it guys, and if you dislike it, remember to leave a comment as well, what's wrong with it, so I can try to improve myself. And if you want to see more content, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.